What's up guys, my name is Ace, and Season 4 of Modern Warfare 3 brought several changes, including footstep changes, as well as changes to killstreaks. I've covered both of those topics in yesterday's videos. Today, we're going to be focusing entirely on the weapon balancing changes that took place here. And let's just dive right into it with the Assault Rifle category. And the first thing to point out here is the BP-50 saw some nerfs. And first, with the base BP-50, so not using the aftermarket part, we saw some movement speed nerfs. Before Season 4, this gun was a big outlier in the Assault Rifle category. It was the best in the Assault Rifle category across the board, or at least tied for the best in the category. However, they have now nerfed our base movement speed, our sprint speed, and our tactical sprint speed. And now these values are more so just in line with the other Assault Rifles, so it's not like this is bad in this area, it's just no longer a standout. And that's all they did with the base version of the BP-50. However, the Jack Revenger SMG kit saw several nerfs. And the first thing here to talk about is the mobility nerfs. Pre-patch, when using this kit, we actually had way better mobility than all of the SMGs in the game. Whereas now, they've just dialed things back to the point where it's right around average for a typical SMG. And honestly, that's still pretty impressive considering the fact that you get a 60 round magazine by default. And if you were to put a 60 round mag on most of the SMGs in this game, you'd end up with noticeably worse movement speeds than this. So after these nerfs, I still consider this SMG kit to be pretty solid in the mobility department. It's just more in line with where it probably should be. However, that's not the only change they made to the SMG kit. They also nerfed our damage values a little bit. And the easiest way to display that is with my range and time to kill chart. As you can see here, in our maximum damage range, we still have the potential to get a 5-shot kill to the body. However, pre-patch, you could shoot them anywhere on the body for that 5-shot kill. Post-patch, now all 5 of your shots have to hit the upper torso or arms, so it's not very forgiving in that area. If you end up hitting 1 shot to the leg or even the lower torso, now it's going to take you 6 shots to kill. And then on top of that, in our second damage range, we no longer have the potential to get a 5-shot kill. It's going to be a 6-shot kill to the body. So these nerfs will definitely bring this kit down quite a bit. It's still going to be a very usable gun. I would still consider it to be fairly solid. You can definitely still find a whole lot of success with it. And I wouldn't call it a bad SMG post-patch by any means. It's just no longer going to be that crazy dominant force that it was before this update. And that covers it for all the BP-50 nerfs. Next, let's move on to the MCW. And with this, they partially reverted the headshot nerf that we saw previously. You guys might remember they actually eliminated the headshot multiplier, so you dealt the same amount of damage to the head as you did to the upper torso and arms, meaning you could no longer get a four-shot kill with this gun. After this update, they did give us a bit of a headshot multiplier at 1.25, and this means in that maximum damage range, you just have to mix that one headshot in with upper torso shots to get a four-shot kill again with the MCW. However, this headshot damage still isn't quite as good as it used to be, and beyond that maximum damage range, headshots are going to be essentially useless. It's not going to be worth going for beyond that maximum damage range. And that's going to wrap it up for the Assault Rifle category. Not a ton of changes there. Next, let's get into SMGs, and the big standout here was the FJX Horus. Now, the first thing they did with this gun is they reduced the recoil gun kick a little bit, but honestly, looking at this pre-patch versus post-patch, it's pretty inaccurate in both cases. This isn't suddenly going to make the FJX Horus significantly more accurate than it was previously. It's still going to bounce around on you quite a bit. But in saying that, that's not all they did. They also very drastically improved our 5-shot kill potential, or our maximum damage range. Previously, it was just 10.2 meters. Now, it's 17.8 meters. And on top of that, they did improve our second damage range a little bit as well. So that's a huge improvement there. But that's not all. Another thing they did is they increased our lower torso damage multiplier to match our upper torso and arm multiplier. And this just means getting that 5-shot kill in that maximum damage range is going to happen on a more consistent basis because 3 out of those 5 shots have to hit that bonus body zone, and now that bonus body zone is noticeably larger. On top of this with the FJX Horus, a couple of the attachments were adjusted slightly. The No Stock mod saw an increase to the Aim Down Sight Movement Speed benefit from 9% up to 12%, although I still wouldn't recommend using that attachment simply because it makes the recoil completely unmanageable. And then with the Lopper LXD stock, they added a 3% Aim Down Sight Movement Speed penalty, so a bit of a nerf to that stock. And that's it for the Horus. I would say this gun definitely saw the biggest improvement with this patch out of any of them. And using it a little bit post-patch, it definitely seems to be very noticeably better than it was pre-patch. So definitely give that one a shot if you haven't yet. Next, let's talk about a bunch of range buffs to SMGs. Most of these are quite minor. As you can see here with the Ram 9, there was just a slight improvement to our first two damage ranges. And we actually see this exact same trend carry over to the AMR9. Again, slight improvement to the first two ranges. The HRM9, same story here, very slight improvement. The Striker 9, again, 
First two damage ranges slightly improved, but that third one wasn't touched at all. Then with the Striker 45, the values they use in the patch notes didn't really align with what I've tested in game. But in either case, our four shot kill potential was slightly improved on the Striker 45. Then for the WSP9, this one's a bit of a standout here. Instead of a very slight improvement to our first two damage ranges, we actually saw a pretty significant improvement here. So this one should feel quite a bit better post patch. And I definitely recommend giving this one a shot again because it looks like this should be a pretty nice improvement. And then finally, let's talk about the Rival 9 a little bit. Now, the first thing is the base Rival 9, just like all the other SMGs we talked about. It saw some slight improvements to the first two damage ranges, but more importantly, they completely reworked the Jack Headhunter kit on the Rival 9. And this is the kit that turns it into a burst gun, and the first adjustment they made here was to our rate of fire within each burst. It went from roughly 857 rounds per minute all the way up to 1200 rounds per minute. So this is a drastic improvement. However, the burst delay seems to be unchanged at about 65 milliseconds. And you can also see this does improve our time to kill, but we don't have a range drop off anymore. So let's dive into the ranges because they also reworked our damage profile here. And as we can see, the Jack Headhunter kit now has a five shot kill potential at all ranges. And it's a guaranteed five shot kill in the first two ranges. With the final range, you just have to make sure you're not mixing in any leg shots. So we no longer have that four shot kill potential in the maximum damage range like we had pre-patch. However, since our rate of fire is very significantly faster after this update, we still end up with a faster time to kill potential with a five shot kill than we did previously with a four shot kill. And next, I do want to show you guys the recoil testing that I did here, but the main thing is I want you to pay attention to the rate of fire sound so you can hear just how fast it sounds post-patch compared to pre-patch. So have a listen and look at the recoil. So I'm sure you could really notice the difference in rate of fire there, but this also means that we technically see a little bit more recoil, even though they didn't adjust the recoil values at all. Since we have a faster rate of fire, there's less time between bursts to recenter, which results in a higher magnitude of recoil. But overall, this is a really nice boost to the Jack Headhunter kit. And this now reminds me much more of the Chicom from Black Ops 2. And I'm really happy to see this. And I'm actually looking forward to giving this one a shot post patch. Haven't had a chance to try it out yet, but it looks like it's gonna be quite good to use. And that right there wraps it up for all of the SMG changes, and we've just got a couple more changes to cover here. The first one is in the Marksman Rifle category with the MCW 6.8 using the full auto conversion kit. They just fixed the recenter a little bit, and what they did here is pre-patch. If you were using this kit and you were firing and controlling the recoil, so pulling down on your aim a little bit as you were firing, when you stop firing, the recenter would overcorrect and you'd actually end up much lower than your initial point of aim. Even if you stopped giving it input, it would just overcorrect by itself. And that was a little bit awkward. They have since fixed this where now you still can control your recoil just fine, but just like with all of the other guns in the game, it will no longer overcorrect. And instead, it can now only correct back to the point of origin from when you started firing, at least by itself. Obviously, you can still pull it lower if you're still controlling that aim though. So that's a nice change. It's gonna make that kit feel a lot less awkward to be using. And then finally, something hardcore players are gonna be very happy to see. We saw some adjustments to the RGL-80. Now the first thing was a bit of a buff. They actually improved our aim down sight time from 310 milliseconds down to 260 milliseconds. But most importantly here for hardcore players, they decreased the explosive damage by 80% in hardcore game modes. And this just means you're no longer gonna be able to get that one hit kill without a direct impact in hardcore game modes. And that's been a huge problem in this game for hardcore since the game has launched. This thing has plagued hardcore game modes. And honestly, it has taken them far too long to get on top of this. But I'm glad they finally did that for the people that do play hardcore. This is going to make a big difference for that game mode. And with that, that is going to wrap it up for all of the weapon balancing that took place with Season 4. And overall, while this wasn't the biggest list of changes we've seen with a seasonal update, most of the changes here seem pretty solid. It's nice to see that BP-50 SMG kits taken down a notch because it was absolutely too much of a standout pre patch. Now it's just more in line with where it should be without being completely underpowered. Also that FJX horse buff is quite nice so if you can handle a high recoil gun you should be able to find a ton of success with that. And then on top of that the Jack Headhunter kit. I'm really looking forward to checking that one out after this update because it's going to feel essentially like a totally different gun than it was pre-patch. Now with that this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. How are you feeling about this weapon balancing that took place with season 4 in Modern Warfare 3? Are you guys generally happy with what you're seeing here or not so much? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.